Hey there friends, it's been quite a while. Um, got back from Texas a couple months ago, which was an amazing trip and summer just kind of has slipped away from me. Um, so I just thought I'd maybe get back into this and get a video in today. I am in wonderful, beautiful Fort Collins, Colorado. And I came out earlier this week to surprise my cousin for her birthday, which worked. We pulled it off, it was great. Um, so you can sort of kind of maybe see the mountains back there. They're kind of in a, they're, they're a little far away, but they're there nonetheless. And it is gorgeous. It's like 93 degrees here today. Does not feel like it uh, for me, for, for this Michigan girl who has been used to all the crazy humidity we've been having. This is wonderful. So um, I just wanted to um, touch base with everyone. So the last few weeks have been kind of rough. So my platelet counts and my, my blood cell levels have dropped significantly and I was not doing well and I didn't want to admit it you know I was in huge denial for probably longer than I should have been um I was getting my blood work checked but not um as regimented as they wanted like every seven days maybe I'd wait 10 or 15 days or whatever um and then I actually did go and they checked nothing that they were supposed to um it, you know, and which I didn't find out till after I got home. So, you know, the labs don't always know and I should be better prepared and make sure and double check that they're checking the ones that they need to. And I just take for granted that they're gonna do what they're supposed to do or do what I'm, I need to have done. Um, so lesson learned, always know what you're supposed to have done, double check, verify. They don't always know. And they're not always pulling the right things, especially if you've got orders for all kinds of crap like I do. So. Um, Lesson number one, yeah, always make sure. So there's that. Um, but anyway, so what it was doing, because my platelet count was so low, it completely, completely wore me out. Like I had zero energy. Um, <laughs> I was lucky to get through the day. It was, it was awful. So we have a house with a basement and an upstairs. Our bedroom is upstairs. Um, we pretty much live on the main floor and then in the basement, there's the laundry room and kids hang out and stuff like that. So for me to go down and do laundry was a huge task. Um, by the time I made it down there, I had to just sit down and chill for a minute. And I would literally sit in front of the washing machine, load the washer, sit in front of it to take the stuff out, load the dryer, sit in front of the dryer and take it out and put it in a basket. Like it was ridiculous. Um, I'd have one of the kids or, or Jamie would have to bring the basket up so to fold and actually it wasn't that they were making me do all this they were totally helping out but when they're at work or at school or doing whatever they need to do not that school has started but band practice has started um I, I would do it because that's what you do you know you don't just stop doing what you do so um it but when they were home they totally helped and pitched in and stuff like that but it I didn't think about not being able to do it like that wasn't a thing to me it wasn't that I couldn't do it right so I'm figuring it out how do you how do you make this happen you don't feel that great but let's make it happen um for me to walk upstairs I could only do one flight at a time and I would have to go sit down and rest I would go back upstairs to my room where I have uh, my office set up kind of at the top of our stairs there's a landing um because I am back to work and it would take me a good two, three, four, five minutes to just sit there until my heart quit feeling like it was gonna beat out of my chest and until my legs calmed down. Like it was so strange. So I'd, I'd, I would walk up the stairs and my, literally my heart would feel like it was gonna beat right out of my chest and my legs would feel like they were gonna collapse underneath me. And the only way I could explain it to my husband was um, they feel like they're starved of oxygen. Like they ache and they 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 hurt and and it wasn't my legs necessarily but it was totally my muscles and I could tell that so it was very strange um, and I didn't realize you know it was as bad as it was um, and I and I didn't want to think it was as bad as it was I was just like yeah it, it it's okay I'm just having a rough day it'll be better tomorrow it'll be better tomorrow it'll be better tomorrow like I can't tell you how many times I said that to myself so by the time I got to the doctor. Um, and really realized what was going on, they wanted me to have a blood transfusion. And I was like, um, no, I don't want a blood transfusion. I'm happy with the blood I got, you know, and one of those, cause I'm, you know, oh, so stubborn and uh, whatever. So I did end up, of course, having a blood transfusion. And I can tell you, 
what a difference. Like I felt so much better and it took a couple of days, but I was gradually getting better and unbelievably different. I, I had energy, not a ton, but I could walk up the stairs and not feel like I was going to die. Um, I could walk outside and see what the guys were doing and not feel like I was going to collapse in the middle of the driveway. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it, it's a thing. So when your body's telling you something, we really, really, really need to listen. And sometimes it's really, really hard because we always feel like we know what's best, right? We've been inside our bodies for however many years old we are. We know what's going on. No, not always. Um, so that's today's thing. So I, I've been reading all kinds of different things this summer. And of course, since I could do basically nothing for the last several weeks, I've gotten several books in, which is good. But since I got to Colorado, uh, my cousin is a huge reader and I picked this one up the other day, um, straight up. This guy was uh, an NFL player and he wrote a book. His name is Trent Shelton. And so far it's been awesome. Um, they're doing some construction over there. Um, and I really like it, but he totally hit the nail on the head. Um, and I'm gonna just read you this, this little, little tiny blurb. Um, it says, a pastor I knew once tried to explain Genesis 1 to me, how God created everything with a single word and a single thought. He said, we actually know what this is like. There's one area in our lives where God has given us that level of control and power, and that is in our bodies. When you think arm, move, your arm listens and moves. And when you say thumb up, your thumb obeys. And it's pretty incredible if you think about it, right? I mean... I'm talking to you because I'm telling myself to talk and it happens. That's just how it works. But we don't think about these simple little things, right? We take them for granted. But if you really take a minute and think about it, it's pretty profound. So um, when your body, see, it's a weird thing for you when you tell your body to do something, to try to move a muscle or tell your arms or legs to move and you get no response. But that's what was happening to him in this book. That was what was happening to me. Um, I wanted to go out and see the guys one day. They were all working out in the yard, in the, in the driveway, the garage, whatever. There's a million projects going on at my house. And I just wanted to go outside and hang out and see what was up. So I came downstairs, went to walk out onto the deck to go down a few more stairs. I made it to the deck and literally slumped into one of the chairs on my deck and leaned my head back on the railing, just above the chair and on the railing of my deck, and I just stared at the sky. My arms just hung, my legs just kind of were slumped there. And I just thought, and, and it's kind of morbid, I guess, I don't know, but I was just like, this, maybe this is what it's like, you know, when you die, things just slowly start to fade away. Um, but my mind was a 100% there. So I'm laying there and I'm just looking at the sky and listening to the breeze. It was a gorgeous day, little bit of clouds. I mean, it was a beautiful day, but I couldn't move another step if somebody paid me to do it. I mean, I was literally lucky to make it to the chair and it was kind of heartbreaking because it makes you reflect on all kinds of different things, right? Because I'm sitting out there, I had this big old conversation with God, which was good and it was a good thing, but you know, like Alzheimer's patients or um, the ALS patients, like you have no control over what your body's doing, but your mind is physically there. You are mentally put together, but it doesn't matter how hard or how many times you tell yourself to do something, it didn't happen. And it was a scary reality for me. Um, and that was like four days before I found out that I needed a blood transfusion. So sometimes, if we realize at all, or have even the sliver of an idea that we might be in reality with ourselves, people I am telling you, understand what you're being in, in real, in, in, not in reality, in denial. If you're at all in denial with yourself, stop and think why, you know, what, is there something that you need to do? Is there something that can be done? Because I could have probably prevented some of that had I gotten my blood work done earlier or contacted my doctor and said, hey, this is what I'm feeling and this is how it's going. Is this normal? But I kept telling myself, it's going to get better tomorrow. It'll be better tomorrow. It'll be better tomorrow. You know, I just need a little bit of rest. It didn't matter how much rest I got. It, I was not getting better. Um, so thankfully, there was, a, you know, a fix for it. Um, my counts are better. I'm doing better. 
and it's and it's wonderful but my lesson for everyone this time is listen to your body seriously take a step outside of yourself and listen to your body don't be so stubborn don't be so bullheaded about it and don't think it's just going to go away because sometimes it's not just going to go away listen to your loved ones who are saying babe there's something going on or honey please please call your doctor don't be so damn stubborn it isn't worth it it just isn't um on a lighter note i've had my cat scan last week i am still disease free no evidence of disease at the moment um, all my counts are back up to where they should be i'm doing really really well um but that was a big that was a big bump in the road for me over the last month or so so anyway just catching everybody up that's where i'm at don't be in denial and if you are admit it and do something about it uh, the people around you love you they're there because they care listen to them let them help with some of these decisions let them help with some of the things that you need to do to move forward and make things better because it isn't always easy don't take it all on yourself it isn't worth it so enjoy the people that are around you and that love you and uh, let them in a little bit more every day because it's it's nice and when you do you'll be grateful and thankful I promise so as long as they mean well but anyway so I hope everybody out there is doing great. Summer is almost over. Um, I'm ready for fall. Hope you guys are too, because it is right around the corner. Everybody have a wonderful day. Take care. I love you guys.